and this is Harbinger again. This uh, video is just going to be a quick run through of the methodology and the circuitry used to create uh, the tic tac toe board that I've done with Redstone. I'm not going to have any kind of demonstration really in this video. I'm just going to stick to explaining the various sections of the device itself. Uh, this first part right here. Stacked 3 high, of course, is uh, what controls the display. I've got everything kind of labeled for you here in case people decide to download the save game and want to take a look at things. Give them a brief explanation of what they're looking at. Between those two blocks of stone is the wiring that uh, actually turns on the bits of the display. I've got them labeled as A, B, and C. We can split up. Uh, basically split up the display into three segments because that's all you need to differentiate between an X and an O. A is the four corners, B is the four sides, C is in the middle. So for an X we just need to have A and C on, for an O we need to have A and B on. And then all of that is just the wiring connecting the four A's together, the four B's together, and then the C coming out in the middle that nine times. Then in between these two blocks of stone is the decoder for X and O. Just run the three lines out from the display for each one for each segment. And then this little device right here turns on the segments that correspond to X and O. All of this right here, between that block and this block way over here, is just wiring the memory cells up to the back of the display. Without, uh, without the section to the left of here, everything would have to be controlled by basically 18 18 on-off switches to uh, display everything that would need to be displayed on on and off for each segment and for each X or O for each segment. What using these latches right here for memory will do, and there are two rows of nine, the one there and then second row above. One is for X, one is for O benefit of doing it this way is that instead of having 18 toggling on off switches here we can have it condensed down to 18 momentary push button switches. The way that these uh, latches work is that once they receive an input they will continue to have an output and they have no output until they've received an input. So let's just take the uh, on-off switches down to momentary switches. We've got to sign up on the other side. This is also where the reset goes in. And I'll show you that as well. But to reset it, you just have lines of redstone connecting to each memory cell to uh, turn their output back to off. And that essentially resets it. Then what we have from that block to this block are the logic switches determine whether it sends an output to the X or to the O as far as the memory goes. What these allow us to do is take the 18 push button switches essentially that we would need to control the memory, condense it down into 9, which is what's wired up to the control panel back up there uh, on, the play, on the gameplay platform. way that we do things here, we have, uh, well, these are two sets of gates, we have a toggle flip-flop back here that is actually used to control the player rotation. Whenever somebody pushes a button, turns on, this damn chicken is annoying me, turns on the, uh, turns on the correspondence 
corresponding segment of the display. Don't remember which is which, but uh, if the output from that toggle switch is on, it will display either an X or an O. If it's off, it displays the opposite, either an X or an O. I don't remember offhand which is which. But, uh, so then what happens is every time somebody pushes the button to select a square, not only does it send the pulse to these right here, turn on the memory block to display on the screen, it also sends a pulse into the flip-flop which changes its state and changes uh, the input on that half of each of these gates. So, if you followed that, which I know I didn't explain very well, um, basically this, basically all this does is it makes it so that every other time a button is hit on the control panel it will be an X and the other half the time it will be an O. And it alternates between the two. So, oh yeah, right here too, we have a tunnel that leads back to, I'm not going to go all the way down it, leads all the way back to the control panel. You just need the one line right there, and that controls a set of two torches, which alternate back and forth to show you whether the next mark that's placed on the board will be an X or be an O. Still have switches back here that I never bothered to buttons back here that I never bothered to remove. If I hit one of the, actually I can demonstrate that back here. If I hit this button, whatever segment it is, it displayed something on it, and it changed the output of that toggle switch or that toggle flip flop rather. Hit it again sends another input pulse to change the display rotates the toggle again so first time I hit that it would have displayed an X we'll say if that's the case second time it would have displayed an O run around here real quick before it gets to be totally dark and what you're looking at right here are just the long lines that connect the main logic gates up to the control panel back there on the playing platform. Climb over here too. Show you real quick. Um, if I don't get lost, my frame rate always drops around dusk. And it's really lagging bad. Right, I'll go to daylight again here in a second. This is where the uh, reset switch <clears throat> inputs into the system and goes up top to reset the top layer of uh, top layer of, layer of latches and runs underground here there's a torch on top of this block that you can't see that uh, goes all the way down so that whenever Whenever there's an input here, it turns off all of the memory locations and essentially reset. Excuse me. Essentially resets the game. Wait for it to get light real quick, and I will follow these up and around to the control panel. Get back again. We'll continue to wander around here. Went back and added a uh, couple of other signs to things back here. The top row of memory and the top row of logic gates over here control when an X is displayed bottom row of both control when an O is displayed and I've got them labeled in a couple of places for anybody that chooses to download it that'll help for reference in the future these uh, right here bank of uh, nine inputs Again, running back up to the control platform up above. This one right here controls the reset switch. I'll follow it all the way back. 
Again, for anybody that downloads it, right down there is the entrance to a bunch of caves and the mines that I was mining out. Um, they probably extend past, well, I know they extend well past the uh, area that this takes up, so end up having some weird things probably if you cut out all the chunks. But And these run up there to the back of the input panel. Over here, this little tunnel right and runs underneath everything back to the toggle flip-flop that uh, changes the player indicator lights. And the way that that works is we just have a set of uh, raised inverters going all the way up there. When the flip-flop is on, this is on, alternates the state of all these torches, and we can see the end results up there. That's me. This is my little shack that I built while I was down here working on things. I'm not going to bother to delete it, so if you do choose to download it, there'll be some goodies. There's diamond and uh, a little bit of diamond, a little bit of everything else in there. But same thing here. There's a bunch of miscellaneous crap in these chests that I'm not going to bother to get rid of. I'm sure that anybody that does download this is going to, and actually wants to put it on a multiplayer server is going to want to clean this area up a bit, but I'll leave everything there because I'm lazy. But, give you, uh, I'm going to run through what everything does as we go here. Hitting the reset button, pulse runs down that line over there, goes back, clears out all of the memory cells so that nothing is displayed on the screen. We hit a button here and it toggles the player indicator, puts an X up on the screen because that was the state that the flip-flop was in. So the gate controlling an X was allowed to activate because that flip-flop state was on or off, depending, and the pulse from the switch was on. Now that it's alternated, flip-flop is in a different state and instead it displays an O on the screen. Indicator lights have changed again, showing that it is now Player X's turn. And that will go on forever. So we hit that and reset it, and you're ready to start again. As I said in the demo, um, right now there is no error correction, so were you to flip, were you to hit a button twice immediately after another, it would attempt to put an X in the same square that was already occupied by an O. Player uh, player indicator would still rotate, but you'd end up with all nine squares on the display, or all nine segments on the display filled up for that particular square. Something I intend to add later. Um, it's not too hard to do if you decide to take this and run with it. Another thing that I want to eventually add is some logic back there that will read the state of the memory, and each player has eight different ways that they can win. Three across, three up and down, two diagonally. So what it would do uh, to determine who won, read the state of the inputs for each of the players, and monitor to see if the uh, any of those eight combinations for victory have taken place. If they do, eventually it would, uh, you know, display display the winner somewhere, and disable the rest of the circuit until the reset switch was hidden or was hit. But that's a quick rundown on the way that things work. Um, again, I've got plenty of signs in here. I'll probably put a little bit of a readme in with the uh, with the world save if you choose to download it. Um, I'm not gonna not gonna take the time on my end to chop out all the extra chunks. I'm I'm not very good with level editing and all of that, so anybody that decides to incorporate it into anything else, I will leave that to you to figure out. But uh, if you have any questions, leave me a comment either here or on Reddit and I will get back to you as much as uh, as much as I can. Right. Hope you found this interesting. Feel free to download it. I love building these things and I love to uh, have any feedback that you want to offer or 
If you do anything with it to expand on it, love to see your results. Thanks for watching.